Well, if you're a Microsoft Edge user, you may have noticed a new icon appearing in the top left corner, which is for workspaces. So what are workspaces? Well, they're really just tab groups that are shareable. So here's what I mean. Maybe you haven't used tab groups in the past. If you just grab a couple of tablets, open a couple here, I'm going to right click on one and I'm going to say add tab to a new group. That's given us the color blue. We could change it to whatever we like. Then we'll just grab this tab and we'll add it into that group, which we can now contract and expand. And it just makes organizing tabs a lot easier because whether you're a Chrome user or an Edge user, if you're anything like my wife, you got a zillion tabs open and it's a right mess. So having something like these tab groups just enables you to organize things a little bit better. But the big problem is if we right click on this, there's no way of sharing this. So each tab individually, or the tab itself, not a lot we can really do apart from hoard all these tabs for ourselves. Now, if we do want to share them, that's where workspaces come in. So we'll click in the top left corner here. We've got two options to learn a little bit more about workspaces. Don't need to do that, you're here. Or create a new one. So let's create a new one. We really only have two options. One is to create a workspace name and give it a color. So I'm going to call this one Tech Life, I'll give it a color of say teal. We'll click done. That's going to change our menu bar up the top here to the color that I've selected, in this case teal. All right, so far doesn't look much different to normal edge. And it isn't really with the exception that now we can create a few new tabs. Let's just go to Microsoft. Let's go to YouTube and we'll go to say Amazon. All right, so got a few links open now. Now these could be personal links for maybe I want to plan a holiday with my wife. So maybe these could be holiday destinations or activities to do whilst we're on holiday. Maybe it's a, a cooking thing where we want to share recipes for the following weeks or months, whatever it is. Now that's from, I guess, a home perspective, but from a corporate perspective, this would be fantastic for collaborating with groups of people on projects, for example. At this point, all I've got is a few tabs open, four tabs in fact, and it seems a little unexciting at this point. We've got this big button in the left hand corner, which obviously tells us the name of the workspace we've created. We created that a moment ago, Tech Life. If we left click on this, we've got options to invite other people to this workspace. We can edit it, which really only gives us the abilities to change the name and the color, pretty uneventful. We can delete it. We could add a new one by clicking on the little plus icon here. And we've got the same options here that we have above. And it might not make much sense to have the exact same options here when they're up there, but that will become apparent when you create a second workspace. So let's just do that. I'll create a yellow one. And now you'll notice that workspace two has become the current workspace. It's the one that's currently active on my desktop. So if I click here and I choose to delete it, it's going to delete workspace two because that's the current active one. Whereas if I'm working in this one and I want to delete the first one, then obviously I would come here into this menu and do it that way. All right, so let's go and make this one active again, the Tech Life one. And we'll want to invite somebody else to our workspace. Otherwise, what's the point? So we'll click up here and we can choose invite to workspace or over here on the right hand side, you see we've got a button which is nicely colored in the same teal. We'll click that. And we've got a couple of options here. We can simply copy the link. So let's do that. I can just send that to somebody via an email or a text message if I've got my phone hooked up to this computer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a new web browser here. Now, this is my personal machine. The one that you see here with the teal, this is running in a virtual machine. So all I need to do now that I've copied that link to my clipboard is just paste this in. I'll hit enter. That will open up a new edge window and let's just close that one. And now you can see that this one is also in teal because we're now connected to the Tech Life workspace. And as you can also see, we have the exact same four tabs. Now at this point here, you can see that the current tab is for Amazon. So coming back here to my own personal link, I'll be able to see that Tech Life happens to be on this tab because I can see their icon there. If I go to the Microsoft one, you'll notice up here that Tech Life can see my icons change to show that I'm viewing the Microsoft tab. So this is pretty cool because now you can see that we can have a whole bunch of people collaborating on a whole set of tabs here. And at any time I can see who's doing what task. Great if you're a project manager, not so good if you're not doing any work and you're supposed to be. 
Now, I will note that there's a couple of issues with this at this point, and I'd largely say they're mostly going to affect the home user. Because in a corporate environment, you're likely to be collaborating on documents that you all have access to. Maybe all these documents are on OneDrive, but you have a corporate OneDrive or a corporate Office 365 or Microsoft 365 as they now call it. And everyone has access to a document set of Word documents and Excel spreadsheets and presentations and all that kind of stuff. So you can collaborate on all these documents. The issue becomes when I want to share and collaborate on a document that I've got saved on my own personal OneDrive. So let's take a look at what that would look like. So I'm going to open up a new tab here and I'm going to go to OneDrive. Now over here, I can see that Tech Life has opened up OneDrive. But if I click on this, it's simply going to try and log me into my own OneDrive, not Tech Life's one. And the same if we go to something like Microsoft 365, let's go and create a Word document. There's my new document. So I'll just type something in. This is a test. Now up here, you can see that I am logged into this tab. If we click this, we receive an error because this account obviously doesn't have access to my personal OneDrive. And that makes sense. But these are the kind of issues you might run into when you're dealing with permissions. And at this point, there doesn't seem to be any way of handling that outside of me sharing access from my OneDrive to TechLife. And that makes perfect sense demonstrating it. But just bear that in mind when you're trying to access things with a friend or a family member and they don't have explicit permission to access the things that you may wish to share. Just bear that in mind. Now, in a corporate environment, you might not have those issues because corporate policy might dictate who's got access to what. Now, one other thing about this is when it comes time to leave. So over here, I've been given an invitation to the workspace. If I no longer want to be part of it, let's say I've resigned, I'm going to work somewhere else, or I just don't want to be part of this anymore, I can come up here, left click, and I can choose to leave the workspace. So if I do that, it's fine. It says I'm going to be removed, but all of this data is going to be available to whoever's left in the workspace. We'll click leave. Okay, that closes down that browser. And obviously up here, you can see the workspace still remains as you would expect. But what happens if the creator leaves? We'll go back here, we'll hit enter on this again, and we'll come back into the workspace because the original invitation is still live. There was no permissions required for me to get in here, just a copy of the link. So again, bear that in mind who you're sharing the link with. Now this may change with future versions. You may be able to password protect these links. Probably not a bad idea. Or at the very least, just share them only using secure methods. Okay, so we're back in. I didn't create this, this guy did. So now we're gonna get him to leave the workspace. Okay, we'll click leave. Now it says here, are you sure you wanna leave? The workspace is gonna be removed. Yeah, we know that. The history and favorites associated with this workspace will still be available to other members of this workspace. Okay, let's test that. We'll click leave. Here I am over on this side. All seems good so far. So just because the creators decided to leave doesn't mean that everyone else has to. So that's a cool feature too. But what if I'm the last person here and I leave? Let's do that. Leave. Let's go and open up. Browser again. We'll hit enter. There it is. Still there. Another thing to point out is even though I didn't create the workspace, this account up here at the top here did. If I click invite, I do have the ability to invite people to a workspace that I personally did not create. So as it says here, only invite people you trust to this workspace. And I couldn't agree more because if I hand out that URL to a bunch of people, anyone can get access to this. And if there is some information that I wouldn't necessarily want to share with anyone, just bear that in mind when you open up anything in this session. Now also it is worth mentioning that yes, we've got a workspace open here, but we can open a brand new copy of Edge and it's gonna function as a normal Edge. Anything that I type in here is not gonna be seen in that workspace. It's only if I then choose to perform an action in the actual workspace, will it then become a collaborative effort. 
Now, another thing is if I go to a URL here on my personal copy of Bing and I grab the tab and I come up here, you can see that has added it to the workspace. So let's go and invite myself to this workspace. All right, you can see that by dragging and dropping a tab from our personal Edge browser, the result is that's now added into the workspace. So just in case you wanted, that is something that you can do. Here's my Mac. This is Microsoft Edge. You can see we've got the workspaces menu. I am logged in with the same account that you saw when we had the dark mode on Windows. So if I click the three little icons here, you'll see that I've got the two workspace options. So let's click on one of those. That opens up a new window. So Mac users are certainly not excluded from this. Everyone's invited to collaborate. Oh, and there's one other thing I did want to add before we finish up this video, and that has got to do with Bing. So if I open up the AI powered chat and I ask it a question, we're gonna get our responses, but you can see over here because that hasn't been added as a tab that I don't have access to the AI components of this just yet. If we do click the share button and I share this as a link and I come up here and open up a new tab, over here, you can see I also have access to that chat, but it has to be added into tabs. So bear in mind that not everything in your browser is going to be shared in a workspace. It's only tabs, which makes sense because at the start of this video, one of the initial statements I made was this was kind of like tab groups. This is all about sharing and collaborating on tabs. I just wanted to point that out because there are obviously other options down the right hand side here things that are in Microsoft Edge that aren't necessarily related to tabs themselves. So if you want to share something, it's got to be in one of those tabs. All right, now there is one other thing that I do want to mention. At the start of this video, I did kind of say if you were using tab groups, there's no way of sharing them. That's not entirely true. With workspaces, we now can take a group of tabs, a tab group, or just an individual tab and share it to a workspace. So it wasn't possible before workspaces existed. You couldn't share tab groups, but now you sort of can. So I'll show you what I mean. So I've got another browser here, this one. And in this browser, I've got a few tabs that are open. Now I don't have a tab group as such, so we can create one. So I'll right click, I'll just add this to a new group. I'm looking at the Premier League football here, so I'll just leave it as that. I'll change it to green so it's easily identifiable. I'm going to add this tab and that tab into it. So we've got three tabs here now. What we can do is we could right click on any of these individual tabs. Right down the bottom, you see we've got an option to move all of these tabs into a new workspace. If we right click, however, on the actual tab name itself, you see we've got an option here to move the tab group into a new workspace, basically the same thing. So let's just click that. There's our new tab group. And if we now click up here, you can see I now have three different tab groups. So I now can invite people to share and collaborate on all of these tabs that I might have just have hoarded on my own personal machine as a tab group. I now can share that into a new workspace, allow people to have access to that. And again, if you no longer need it, you can just go ahead and delete that workspace and it's gone. So that's workspaces. I think it's a fantastic idea. I think there's a, a few things that need to be finessed before this becomes a product that's rolled out to everyone and everyone starts using it. There obviously are the issues of permissions on the back end from whatever it is you're trying to open on the tab. These things will get sorted out, but I think it's a great idea. A collaborative way of sharing tabs, of sharing work. What could go wrong? Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you back here for the next video. You have a great day.